May the God of hope fill you with complete joy and peace as you continue to believe, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here again, words written for us in Matthew chapter 15. Jesus left that place and withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. There, a Canaanite woman from that territory came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. A demon is severely tormenting my daughter. But he did not answer her a word. His disciples came and pleaded, Send her away, because she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt in front of him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered her, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to their little dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. Yet even the little dogs also eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, your faith is great. It will be done for you just as you desire. And her daughter was healed at that very hour. You may be seated. Dear children of God, when mom's not around, dad has been known to take all of the cushions off the couch and all the pillows off the beds and arrange a battle royale. He'd lift the boy in the air, spin him around in a circle, and then throw him down with no mercy. When off the top rope, the daughter comes in and wraps her little monkey arms and legs around him tightly. She has him now, but he's on to her tricks. One quick reach behind him. He's got her, he throws her into the pile, and then the tickling begins. Oh, how he's got them until the son gets his legs into the action. He kicks as hard as he can. The daughter wriggles her way out of there and slams into his side. They each grab an arm and sit on it. They push down as hard on his chest as they possibly can. They've won. The crowd goes wild. God designed all mammals play. From mice all the way to human beings, he has woven it into our brains. Play is not only fun, but it is a vital part of our development and a vital part of making our lives full. And dads can kind of do this naturally. Whether we know it or not, though, we are teaching and training our children. They are learning to control their bodies and their emotions. There's no temper tantrums during roughhousing. Though you say no holds barred, really no one's supposed to get hurt. That's just what they say on TV. Children are learning to be a little bit uncomfortable. They are learning to keep fighting and not give up. Dad knows they get to win every once in a while, even if there's no way they could ever really overpower him. As he wrestles with them, they learn to trust him in a very different way. Kids don't just like challenging play. They need it. I think a teacher knows this too. Sometimes a teacher will not tell her students the right answer. Instead of helping the struggling reader, she makes him sound it out. Instead of correcting the equation, she tells him to go back and look at his work and find his mistake. He'll watch the kids struggle with a challenging topic. He'll even begin to argue against them, messing with their little minds, because the struggle teaches them to think. They need that struggle. Wrestling is necessary for us to really learn. Last week, we saw Jesus locked into a life and death battle with Satan himself. 
Satan showed no kindness and no love in that fight. The devil wasn't trying to make Jesus stronger and to help him grow. He didn't fight fair. He wasn't holding back, and the whole world was hanging in the balance. But this week, this week, Jesus engages in an entirely different kind of struggle. He seems downright mean. But in the end, that lowly woman prevails over God's own son who told Satan to go away, and he fled. May we, in the end, Jesus praises her faith. And so may we be so blessed that God would do the same for us. The Lord challenges the faith of those he loves. He teaches them humble persistence so they would hold on to him tightly through his word. Jesus had to get away. Away from Jerusalem and Judea and the trouble he was stirring up out there. He had to get away. And his journeys away from the crowds and the conflict not only allowed Jesus to rest, but it gave him a chance to teach his disciples in depth. He went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. It wasn't that far, about from here to Sisters, if you want to get an idea. And that would have been mostly downhill, not over and down. And so sometimes he just had to get away from the Jewish lands. Sometimes you've got to go where nobody knows your name, except one buddy did. The most unlikely person you can imagine, an unlikely woman, the Canaanite woman, had heard of Jesus. She had heard of his miracles, even that he might be the long-promised Messiah of Israel. And somehow, this woman heard that Jesus and his 12 followers were in her area. She just had to go there and see him. She needed to see him. He was her only hope, her only chance. And when she found him, she immediately started yelling, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. A demon is severely tormenting my daughter. She made it real awkward, real fast, extremely uncomfortable. She just kept shouting and shouting and shouting, but Jesus refused to acknowledge her existence. He wouldn't respond. If we didn't know better, or if this had been somehow caught on a cell phone camera and uploaded to TikTok, whew, not a good look. I don't think you will find anybody in all the Gospels Jesus treats this way. He spoke harshly to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, but at least he acknowledged that they existed. He was certainly, her need was certainly real, definitely serious, and so obviously within his power. The disciples had seen him drive out demons before. They had even seen him drive out a legion of demons all at once. They are completely baffled. Send her away. Give her what she wants. She keeps crying out after us. If not out of kindness, Lord, for our sanity, do something. Mom. Mom, 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 and eventually every mom is going to reply, "What? What do you want?" And even the strongest mom is probably just going to give in, give the kid what he wants, just to make him be quiet and go away. But that's because it's your kid. If it's not your kid, you just tell him to go away anyways. If some random kid comes up to a mom in the park, 
You're not going to put up with that stuff. You have no obligation to answer that child in the same way. If you want to address your government officials, petition them, you write to Governor Brown, not to Inslee or DeSantis, to Senator Wyden, not to Senator Sinema or Lee. She called Jesus by his title, Lord, Son of David. But David was Israel's king. So why should the Lord help her? He replied, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Woman, you're not my problem. And that should, should have been enough, right? That should have been enough of an answer. She didn't have a right to ask him anything. He didn't owe her a thing. She was outside of his area of ministry. She should have gone home. But instead, she was just happy he finally noticed her. She ran up, fell at his feet, worshiping, saying, Lord, please help me. And how could anyone possibly resist such an innocent plea? Well, don't we all? The people I help are in a certain order. Family, church family, friends. And then organizations I trust will do the most with my money. A story, no matter how moving, doesn't often sway me. I give where I must. I give where I have decided in advance. We all only have so much money. And if I give over here, that means I often can't give over there where I might do more good. So I don't give on a whim. Jesus could have just said no and told her to go. But instead, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. At best, Jesus compared her to a dog. At worst, he called her a dog. Why would she tolerate this? Are you good at waiting? In traffic, do you make sure there's plenty of room in front of you so everybody can easily get by and get ahead? After all, they probably have some place important to be. Why else would they cut you off like that? At Winco, are you happy to stand in line? When you have three items in your hands, are you happy when the line reaches so that you can't even tell which line is which anymore? Are you glad that that person with 30 items gets into the express lane right in front of you? They must be going through something to make them have to do such a thing. When you're at the DMV, are you happy to pull number 135 just as they call out 87? Time for you to read your book or make some new friends sitting on those uncomfortable chairs. I am not good at waiting. I always want to find the faster lane. If I see the parking lot is full, I won't even go in Winco and don't even get me started on waiting at the DMV. I have important places to be. I have better things to do. I should be able to move ahead. I shouldn't have to wait. So I wonder, when would I have given up? Perhaps maybe I would need to know how far did this woman have to go to find Jesus? Would I go at all? Would you? Would I have considered Jesus to be worth the bother? Or would I have first Googled possible solutions to demon possession? Would you have tried some of the home remedies, gone to your local expert or experts, and if they failed, why should this rabbi from Judea be any different?
going to Jesus in our hour of utmost need is not always the first or the second or even our third choice. The pride of, I'll figure this out on my own. Or the strength, I'm going to get my way through this. Battles with the despair of, no one can help me. Not even God in the flesh. So often, we give up even before we try. But this demon and her daughter's suffering made her desperate. She was willing to try anything, go any distance. When that trouble is beyond our power, or when the solution simply eludes us, well, maybe we'll give God a try. But that isn't faith. If going to the Lord with your troubles is something you will give a shot, well, that is not a prayer of faith. That's just another superstition. And when God is silent, with that attitude, how long are you going to keep praying? Do you keep calling and calling and calling? No answer? Well, I guess I've tried. Time to give up. Once again, pride and despair battle it out in your heart. I knew prayer wouldn't really work. I will just have to handle this myself. Or maybe God doesn't really love me. That is what Jesus seems to confirm to this woman. His goods aren't for her. She isn't a member of his chosen people. He doesn't exactly say this, but I know I would have heard it. Go away. God has better things to do than deal with you. Finally, what kind of review would you give Jesus' service if he had said this to you? Worst customer service ever. What a jerk. I came to him with a serious problem. He didn't want to give me the time of day, but when I insisted, he insulted me. I don't care who he is. I shouldn't get, no one should get to talk to me this way. Post it to your profile for sympathy. Others will confirm how you have been wronged. Is the customer always right when you're talking to God? The way God challenges us and forces us to wrestle with him and really makes us struggle struggle against our hardships, struggle against our pride, struggle with despair. They are all here for this one woman. God doesn't immediately reveal what he will do when we pray. Or even if he will do anything that we can see. Is that time to give up? We see our sins. Is God giving me the cold shoulder? Do I deserve to be one of his people? Do I deserve his help? My pride's grip needs to be torn away. My insecurity's hold on my heart needs to be broken. I give up so easily. But just as Jesus reveals, sometimes the struggle the challenge, the hardship, that is God's purpose for you. Am I humble enough to continue to go to God? Will my trust withstand God's silence? Am I persistent like a child calling out, Mom, 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 Dad, 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 trusting that my good and merciful Father in heaven will answer his dear child here on earth. If God doesn't challenge us, how do we learn patient persistence? Humble, patient 
persistence. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Help me. The woman's answer amazes me every time. She agrees. Yes, Lord. Yes, compared to you, I am but a dog. Yes, I don't deserve your best. Yes, I shouldn't even have the right to come and beg from you. Yes, I am unworthy of all of your goodness to me. Yes, I believe you are merciful. You are capable. I know you care. I know you can help me. Heal my daughter. And you have more than enough to give. Jesus' capacity for giving, for listening, for healing, for caring, it isn't limited like my checkbook might be. Yes, Lord, call me a dog if you must, but I am still going to ask. Yes, Lord, for even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And one crumb of your goodness, one speck of your power, is more than enough for my needs. Yes, Lord. Everything you say is true. And that is why I come to beg from you. Have mercy on me, Lord. Help me. Through all of this, I imagine Jesus trying to keep walking, even as the woman groveled at his feet. But here he had to stop. His face lit up with amazed joy a smile spreading across it. Woman, your faith is great. She had him pinned. He spoke and she listened. His own words told her the truth. He wouldn't go back on what he had said. He gave her the very answer she needed to win. Let it be done for you as you have said. And her daughter was healed in that very hour. Parents, you know this world will challenge your children. People out there are not going to love your kids like you do. They are not always going to be kind. The world isn't going to want what is best for them. And we also know we can't control their lives. We want better for them than simply following the easy path that we might lay out for them. We want them to go out for themselves, to be themselves, and to serve and contribute to a world in a way that only they can. We want them to surpass our expectations by setting their own. And none of that is going to be easy. So a loving parent will challenge their child in love. You let them struggle at home. You might even let them lose safely. So you can help them win, and they can learn how it's done. Paul said those who are saved by grace through faith are God's workmanship created for good works. Jesus told his disciples that they would be in the world, but they were not to be of the world. And so being in this world is not going to be easy. Sin has caused weeds to grow up all over the place, and we will endure pain throughout our lives. The devil isn't going to pull his punches on you, and he is never going to let you win. Our sinful hearts are weak. We are often filled with foolish pride, or in despair we give up without a fight. And so it is that God challenges the faith of those he loves. He makes us wrestle. He beckons us to grapple with him. Come to me in prayer, 
he says. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And then he himself gives us what we need to prevail over him. Here, this is what will get God every time. Here are his promises. Here, I have proclaimed you to be my children. New branches grafted into the living vine of Jesus Christ. Here, my forgiveness is proclaimed to you. Here, this is Christ, my grace and my power for you. Here. These words, they send Satan running. Here, these words guide your path through this world. Here, these words strengthen you and help you to overcome your sinful flesh. When God challenges you, go here. Go to his word. Oh, that gets him every time. And God's Spirit gives you strength to overcome all things in what God has promised you. Because here is life. Here is victory. Here is hope. Here is peace. Here is joy. My friends, rejoice when God makes you struggle. It is for your good. Your loving Father wants what is best for you, both in this life, where he has plans for you to use you and your unique talents for his purposes, but also he has plans for you for eternal life. He challenges you. Hold on to him. Hold on to him tightly. He's always overcome by his own Amen. Please rise. And now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.